Hello and welcome to my complete draft guide for the murders at Karlov Manor. In this video, I'll be going over the 10 multicolor archetypes and the secret 11th archetype. I'll show you the best commons and rares in each color, discuss tips and combat tricks, we'll examine our mana fixing options and much more. Here's an overview of the multicolor archetypes, roughly sorted by their speed. And we'll start with red-white on the faster end of the spectrum. This color pair is represented by the Boros Guild, and they want you to be attacking with three or more creatures to enable certain abilities. This is reminiscent of the Battalion mechanic, and even though it doesn't explicitly appear on any cards, the idea is still very much the same. Take Meddling Utes, for instance, a 5-mana 4-5 with haste, and then whenever we attack with three or more creatures, in this case we get to Investigate. So the Investigate mechanic is also back in full swing in this expansion, creating an artifact clue token that we can sacrifice at any point for 2-mana to draw a card. Season Consultant is another payoff, a 2-mana 1-3 getting 2 extra power whenever we attack with 3 or more creatures. And then to make sure we can enable all these synergies, we also want creatures that can generate some creature tokens to help us go wide. And Person of Interest is a great example for mana 2-2, making a 2-2 white and blue detective creature token when it enters. And we also will suspect the Person of Interest, and that's another new mechanic. If you suspect a creature, it will gain menace and it cannot block. So sometimes you'll want to suspect your own creatures to get them through, sometimes you'll want to suspect the opponent's creatures so they cannot block, so some cards will give you that choice. And then finally a finisher like On The Job can be perfect in this deck. This is a new take on the Inspired Charge effect, giving our team plus two plus one until end of turn at instant speed, and in this case we also get to investigate, so it got even better. A red-black is represented by the Rakdos Guild, and it has the highest density of suspects. Take the Runebrand Juggler, a 2-mana two 2-2. Two -two. When it enters a battlefield, we can suspect up to one target creature we control, so we're not forced to suspect anything, but since we're usually the aggressor in the matchup, we don't mind giving our creatures menace and they cannot block, and then in this case we can also sacrifice suspected creatures to maybe take out something else. The convenient targets we can also use both on our creature or the opponent's creature, but we're typically going to buff up our own creature, giving it plus one plus one, menace, and it cannot block, and then we can also get it back from the graveyard. The meddler gives us another payoff for suspecting our creatures, as we'll get to surveil one to give us a bit more card selection. And finally the braggart, just a beefy creature that can also turn into a 5-5 five five with menace that cannot block. Black-White, represented by the Orzhov Guild, has quite a few payoffs for creatures having power 2 or less. In the case of Wisp Drinker Vampire, whenever one of those creatures enters, we get to drain the opponent for 1, and for 7 mana we've got a nice ability giving those creatures Death Touch and a Life Link until end of turn. The Market Watch Phantom is a great role player that fits into a lot of different archetypes, but in this case a 2 mana 2-2, two -two, gaining Flying whenever a smaller creature enters. The slimy dual leech can give one of those creatures plus one plus so and death touch until end of turn on a 4 mana 2 4. And Forum Familiar introduces the new Disguise mechanic, which is an updated take on the Morph mechanic. So we can cast it face down for 3 mana as a 2 2, but now it also has a Ward 2, so that's an upgrade over Morph. And a disguised creature has a mana value of 0 and doesn't technically have a name. And then at any point we have priority, at instant speed we can turn a disguised creature face up by paying its disguise cost. And in this case it's 1 and a white for the forum familiar, we'll get a 1-1 one, one, and the ability will trigger, saying we can return another target permanent we control to its owner's hand and put a plus one plus one counter on the forum familiar. So we'll be left with a 2-2 two, two, that can also bounce one of our permanents back to maybe re-enable some of those abilities. And next up is Green-White, represented by the Celestnia Guild, which is a go-wide disguise deck, which has a few payoff cards, such as Samala Sentry, which rewards us for disguising our creatures and then turning them face up, as we'll not only get a plus one counter on the Sentry, but also on the disguised creature. The Crowd Control Warden is fine to just cast for 5 mana, but we can also disguise it first, and then we'll potentially get the benefit from a Somala Sentry, for instance, and then the more creatures we have in play, the more plus 1 counters we'll get on the Warden as well. 
The Nervous Gardener can also potentially help fix our colors and provides a nice bit of value if we disguise it first. And then a Dog Walker I also wanted to highlight as a card that perfectly fits within this archetype, even if we don't have a red mana to cast it, since we'll simply disguise it for 3 colorless and then can turn it face up with the red-white hybrid cost. So we just need 2 planes to get all the value out of it and create those extra 1-1 tokens, which can then enable some of our other synergies as well. And there's a whole cycle of these hybrid multicolored cards that have disguise, so be on the lookout to potentially play these even if you're not playing those main colors. Then Red Green, represented by the Gruul Guild, is also quite interested in disguising its creatures, although these will typically be a bit more impactful once turned face up. So the Tin Street Gossip fits in perfectly, has a 4 mana 4-4 four four with Vigilance that can tap to add a red and a green that we can only spend to cast face down spells or to turn creatures face up. The Goblin Mask Maker, if we cast it on turn 1, can attack on turn 2 and then give us that discount so we can disguise a creature for just 2 mana. And then the Green Belt Radical is a great example of one of these disguise creatures. Totally fine to cast as a 4 mana 4-4, four four, but much more exciting if we can disguise it first for 3 mana and then turn it face up for 7, in which case we can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each creature we control, as well as giving those creatures trample until end of turn. So just imagine the curve where we disguise Radical on turn 3, and then turn 4 play Tin Street Gossip. Turn 5 both our disguise creature and Tin Street Gossip can attack, and then thanks to Vigilance the Gossip can still tap to add a red and a green to help turn our Radical face up, giving our team plus 1 counters and trample, getting in for a ton of damage. And then a split cards are also back, and these will now have hybrid casting costs on both halves of the card, making it possible for multiple decks to cast either half of the card, making it a lot more flexible. And of course, Bustle of Hustle and Bustle is what we're most interested in in this deck, as we'll get to give our team plus 2 plus 2 and trample, as well as turning one of our creatures face up, so that can also save us a lot of mana. Then Blue White, represented by the Azorius Guild, cares about the detective creature type. Take a look at Private Eye, a 3 mana 3-3, three, three, giving other detectives we control plus 1 plus 1, and whenever we draw our second card each turn, target detective cannot be blocked this turn, so it also pairs well with the investigate mechanic, giving us clue tokens so we can draw more. Then we've got a new subtype for enchantments, which is a case. So we start with Case of the Pilfered Proof, which says whenever a detective enters a battlefield under our control, or whenever a detective we control is turned face up, we can put a plus one plus one counter on it. And then in order to solve this particular case, we need to control three or more detectives, which is pretty easy to do in blue-white. And then at the beginning of our end step, we solve the case if we meet that condition. And then from now on, if one or more tokens would be created under our control, those tokens plus a clue token are created instead. And we of course still get those additional plus one counters on our detectives. Then a Burden of Proof can be quite flexible in this archetype, as we can play it at instant speed thanks to Flash, enchanting our own creature, giving it plus two plus two as long as it's a detective we control, but we can also maybe enchant an opposing creature, turning it into a 1-1 one, one as base power and toughness, and it also cannot block detectives. And while Inside Source doesn't have the detective type itself, it does generate a 2-2 white and blue detective creature token, so that can still enable a lot of our synergies, and then the source itself can also pump up our detective creatures. Then a blue red, represented by the Izzet Guild, wants to be making artifact tokens such as clues and 1 1 flying thopter tokens, as well as sacrificing them for value. So the satchel lets us investigate twice when it enters, making a pair of clue tokens, and then we can tap it to make a 1 1 flying thopter, but only if we've sacrificed an artifact this turn. There's a number of ways to do so, but the most obvious one is to just pay 2 mana to sack a clue, and then we also get to make a thopter. The Harried Dronesmith can repeatedly make a 1-1 hasty Thopter token, but we do have to sacrifice it end of turn, so ideally we can attack with it and then still find another use for it before it goes away and maybe sacrifice it for value elsewhere. The case of the Filched Falcon is also great here, as we'll often have a bunch of artifacts to enable it, and then not only do we get to make a clue token when it enters, but we also get to turn one of our artifact tokens into a 4-4 flying bird, so that can also apply some meaningful pressure. And then the Suspicious Detonation is a great removal spell here, costing 3 less to cast if we've sacrificed an artifact this turn, so that will lower the cost down to just 2 mana to deal 4 damage to target creature, and this spell also cannot be countered, which can also be irrelevant. 
Then blue-green, represented by the Simic Guild, also has a lot of detective creatures, as we've got overlapping synergy with the Azorius game plan, but we also get to introduce a new mechanic, Collect Evidence. Take a look at Evidence Examiner, a 2-mana 2-2, two -two, saying at the beginning of combat on our turn, we may collect evidence for. So to collect evidence for in this case, we exile cards with total mana value 4 or greater from our graveyard, and then whenever we collect evidence, we now get to investigate. It doesn't matter if we collect evidence with the examiner or with a different effect, we'll always get to make a clue token, so that can also quickly accrue a lot of clues. Then the Forensic Researcher, a 3-mana 1-3, also detective, can tap to untap another target permanent we control. So we can use that to untap our land, for instance, after tapping it to float some mana, and that can help us ramp. But we can also tap the Researcher, collect evidence 3 in this case, to tap target creature we don't control. So we can use that to kind of keep the opponent's creatures in check, and if we also have an Examiner in play, maybe generate some clue tokens at the same time. The V2 Gassy Inspector, another creature that lets us collect evidence, in this case collect evidence 6 in order to get an extra plus one plus one counter and 2 life. And then I also wanted to highlight the Projector Inspector, a 3-mana three 3-2 three human detective, saying whenever the Inspector or another detective enters a battlefield under our control, or whenever a detective we control is turned face up, we may draw a card, and if we do, discard a card. And of course, by drawing and discarding, we can potentially put some expensive cards in the graveyard that will then help us collect evidence, so that can also be a great way to go about it. And then now we're definitely getting to some of the color pairs that want to play long and grindy games to leverage their card draw engines, and Black Green, represented by the Golgari Guild, is certainly one of those. Insidious Roots represents a host of cards that reward us for having creatures leave our graveyard. We can accomplish that in a multitude of ways, we can maybe get creatures back from our graveyard and put them in our hand, or we can exile them to collect evidence, and that will also satisfy the Insidious Roots condition in which case we get to make an 0-1 plant token, as well as giving all our plants a plus one plus one counter, and then a creature tokens we control can also tap to add one man of any color, which can maybe help us ramp. Sample Collector is one of the better creatures with Collect Evidence, as it can generate multiple plus one plus one counters over time. It's also only Collect Evidence 3, so that's not super high compared to some of the other cards. And then as a 3 mana 2-3, two, it also lines up favorably against the various 2-2 two, two Disguise creatures. And on top of that, it's also a Detective, so it would also fit quite well into the blue-green archetype. Then the Rot Farm Amortipede is another payoff for having creatures leave our graveyard, as it will gain a plus one plus so menace and lifelink until end of turn on a 4 mana 3 4. And then we've got cards like the Rubble Belt Maverick, a 1 mana 1 1 letting us surveil 2 when it enters, so that can be a great way of filling the graveyard to enable the collect evidence mechanic. And then we can also pay a green to exile the Maverick from our graveyard and give us a plus one plus one counter. And by exiling the Maverick, of course, we also satisfy the Mortipede or the Insidious Roots abilities. And then another example is the Leering Onlooker, costing 4 mana to exile it from our graveyard, but now we get to make a pair of 1-1 one, one Flying Bat tokens, so that's also great value, while maybe enabling some of those other synergies. And finally, Blue Black, represented by the Demir Guild, is trying to play a longer control game, where it tries to leverage clue tokens for card advantage. The Curious Cadaver can return from our graveyard to our hand if we sacrifice a clue, so that also has some overlapping synergy with the Golgari Guild. Deduce, a great 2 mana instant, letting us draw a card as well as investigate, so it's 4 mana total to draw 2 cards, but we can split it up. And then we've got some very efficient interaction, such as Long Goodbye, destroying a creature or planeswalker with mana value 3 or less, although the only planeswalker in this set has mana value 4. And then a Reasonable Doubt, a very nice counter spell, countering unless the opponent pays 2 mana. And then we can also suspect up to 1 target creature, which we can use both on our creature or the opponent's. And now I've already hinted at the secret 11th archetype, but this one's not going to come together very often. But when it does, it's going to be glorious. It's the rainbow deck, a 5 color deck, often base green, since we need the green for color fixing. And then one of the main payoff cards is niv Mizzet Guild Pact. This 5 color 6-6 six, six flying dragon has hexproof from multicolored, and if it ever connects with the opponent, it will provide even more value if we control some multicolored permanent. 
And then a case of the Shattered Pact is both an enabler for the archetype as well as a payoff. When we cast it, we get to search our library for a basic land card and put it in hand to fix our colors. And then to solve it, there are five colors among permanents we control. So if we control niv Mizzet, we can satisfy that condition. And then once solved at the beginning of combat on our turn, target creature we control gains flying, double strike and vigilance until end of turn. Now, a Leyline of the Guild Pact is not a card that any deck is going to be interested in, besides maybe this archetype, as we can now enable Case of the Shattered Pact just by starting with a Leyline of the Guild Pact in our opening hand. And then since we're base green, it's also pretty easy to cast it, and then that can also fix our colors, and then more mana fixing is going to be required, so a card like Escape Tunnel is also going to be pretty valuable. Now it's time to take a look at the best commons in each color, and in white I'm a big fan of Novice Inspector. It may not look like much, but having the detective creature type is super relevant. Getting a body in play early, so we can enable the battalion deck for instance, is also very important. And then the clue token can later represent an extra card, but we can also maybe use it for other various synergies. So just two permanents for one card is pretty much where we want to be. Then a makeshift binding is one of the better removal spells at common, exiling a creature and gaining two life as well. There's not too many disenchant effects that people should be main decking, so it's going to be mostly safe. Then there's a Market Watch Phantom that we've already seen, 2 mana 2-2, two, two, that can often gain flying to get in for some evasive damage. And then Inside Source we've already covered as well, perfect for any go-wide strategy, and also makes a detective, so has plenty of synergy there as well. And then in blue we've got the Cold Case Cracker, a 4 mana 3-3 three, three flyer that lets us investigate when it dies, so a large evasive creature at a reasonable cost that will provide value in most cases when dealt with is great. We've got Dramatic Accusation as a solid removal spell, which will tap a creature down and keep it tapped down. We're used to paying one and double blue for this effect. And then on top of that, we can also shuffle the enchanted creature into its owner's library in case it has some annoying utility effect that will persist even though it's tapped. We've got Projector Inspector, which we've already covered, great in any blue-green detective deck or blue-white, and then especially if we pair it with Collect Evidence. And then finally, Unauthorized Exit, a two-mana bounce spell that also lets us surveil one, is also quite versatile, especially after the opponent spent a lot of mana maybe disguising a creature and then turning it face up. Then in black, it doesn't get much better than the classic 3 mana instant speed removal spell. Murder takes care of a creature, no questions asked. Then the macabre reconstruction can often be cast for just 2 mana if a creature card was put into our graveyard this turn. And then we get to return 2 creatures from our graveyard to our hand, so it kind of naturally enables itself. Can also potentially enable some of the synergies in black green. Then the Agent, a 1-1 that makes the opponent exile a card from their hand, exiling a pretty big upside over discarding in a set where the graveyard matters. And then finally the Snarling Gorehound can be a great way to fill the graveyard as a 1-1 with Menace, can also chip in for a bit of damage early, and then whenever another creature with power 2 or less enters a battlefield under our control, we get to Surveil 1. My favorite red common is Galvanize, dealing 3 damage to a creature unless we've drawn 2 or more cards this turn, in which case we deal 5 damage to that creature instead, so it pairs very well with clue tokens. Then a Shock is back, dealing 2 damage to any targets, so this can also go upstairs. Now of course if we try to take out an opposing creature that's been disguised, we still have to pay the ward cost, so then it's going to cost us 3 mana to take out a 2-2 with ward 2. Then a person of interest fits into a lot of different archetypes, especially red-black and red-white, where we want to eventually go white to enable battalion and to pump up our team. And then finally, Gearbane Orangutan is a great way to answer opposing artifacts. Even a clue token can be good value on a 2-2 with reach. And then we can also decide to sacrifice an artifact instead, and then it enters with two plus one plus one counters, so then it can be quite large early on. And then how can I say no to a Tunnel Tipster, a 2-mana 1-1 one, one that taps for a green, so you're a classic ramp creature, but at the beginning of our end step it also picks up a plus one counter if we played a face down creature. Then the Loxodon Eavesdropper, a 4-mana 3-3, three, three, that investigates when it enters, so provides immediate value. And whenever we draw our second card each turn, it picks up plus 1 plus 1 and Vigilance until end of turn, so good on offense and defense. And then a Bite Down on Crime, a 4-mana removal spell that gets a 2-mana discount if we collect Evidence 6, and then our creature gets 2 extra power and deals damage equal to its power to a creature we don't control. 
And then finally, Topiary Panther is pretty flexible, as we can uh, land cycle it early to fix our colors, and then late game a 6 mana 6-5 six with Trample. Now that we've seen some of the best commons, I wanted to highlight some of the best uncommons. These are all multicolor removal spells and uh, great incentives to kind of go into the respective color if you open it early in the draft. Cursed to kill in blue-black, steals an opposing creature, turns it into a 1-1 with Death Touch, so it's a very nice 2 for one Buried in the Garden will exile an opposing null and permanent, as well as make extra mana for you, so it also fixes our colors at the same time, a great way to cast some more expensive spells afterwards. And then a deadly complication is a sorcery speed murder, but can also potentially give us an extra plus one plus one counter if we control a suspected creature. And then a lightning helix, a very welcome reprint that's uh, still great in limited, dealing three and gaining three at instant speed. And now it's time to take a look at the best rares and mythics in each color. These are bombs that can take over the game. And starting in white, we have Aurelia's Vindicator, a 4 mana, 4 2 with flying, a lifelink, and a ward 2. Already quite good, but we can also disguise it first. And then, when turned face up, if we pay enough mana, we can exile multiple creatures the opponent controls, as well as maybe some creatures from our graveyard. And then, if it uh, doesn't get answered, it will likely win us the game. If the opponent does manage to remove the Vindicator, those exiled cards go back to their owner's hands, so the opponent still has to recast all those creatures, and then we also get some cards back from our graveyard, so it still provides a nice bit of value. Then the 10th District Hero is a 2 mana 2 3, already lines up quite well against creatures with disguise, and then we can slowly grow it by collecting evidence, first making a 4 4 with vigilance, and then later a 5 5, still with vigilance, that makes the rest of our team indestructible. And that's going to be pretty useful if someone casts no witnesses. This 4 mana sweeper gives a player with the most number of creatures a clue token, and then destroys all creatures. So, very powerful sweeper to have in limited. And then in blue we've got Cryptic Coat, a 3 mana equipment that will come attached to the top card of our library after cloaking it. So that turns it into a 2-2 face down creature with Ward 2. If it happens to be a creature we can turn it face up by paying its mana cost, if not it will stay a face down creature. And then the equipped creature also gets one extra power and cannot be blocked. So we essentially get a 3 mana 3-2 three that cannot be blocked. Small chance we can turn it face up if it's a creature as well. And then if we end up running out of creatures somehow, we can still pick up the coat for one and a blue and then recast it to once again cloak the top card of our deck. So that also makes it a very nice mana sink. If we just have a lot of mana to spend, we can just keep making 2-2 two, two creatures. Then we've got Intrude on the Mind, a 5 mana mythic rare instant that either lets us draw some cards or make a large Thopter token or somewhere in between. It's up to the opponent to decide as we get to split the top 5 cards of our library into 2 piles. We can decide to make a pile of 5 cards and a pile of 0 cards and then the opponent has to decide whether they give us a 5-5 flyer at instant speed or they let us draw 5 cards. So no matter what we're going to get good value and we can also of course split it more evenly. And then finally the Forensic Gadgeteer, not quite as exciting as our other rares so far, but still pretty good as a 2-3, saying whenever we cast an artifact spell we investigate, and activated abilities of artifacts we control get a 1 mana discount, but they cannot be reduced to less than 1 mana, so that benefits clue tokens which we can now sacrifice for 1 mana, but also equip abilities for instance, which can also maybe be discounted. Then moving on to black, we've got Vein Ripper, a 6 mana, 6-5 six flyer with a ward, forcing the opponent to sacrifice a creature. And then whenever a creature dies, target opponent loses 2 life and we gain 2 life. So even when attempting to take out Vein Ripper, the opponent has to sack a creature, which enables the Ripper's ability, resulting in a drain for 2. So this one's a nightmare to deal with and can end games very quickly. Then we've got Massacre Girl, a known killer, a 4 mana, 4-4 four, four with menace, saying creatures we control have a wither, so they now deal damage to creatures in the form of minus one minus one counters, which is definitely a very nice upgrade. And then whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, if its toughness was less than one, we draw a card. So that can also give us a few extra cards here and there. And finally, Outrageous Robbery, X and double black for an instant, exiling the opponent's top X cards face down. We get to look at them and play them, including fixing our colors to cast those cards. So just uh, essentially drawing cards from the opponent's library. So this is also a great source of card advantage. 
Then moving on to rent, we've got the Incinerator of the Guilty, has a 6 mana 6-6 six, six flying trample, and if it hits the opponent and we can collect evidence, it can be a nice one-sided board wipe. Then there's a Lamplight Phoenix, a 3 mana 3-3 three, three flyer, and when it dies we can also collect evidence 4 to bring it back. And finally, Krenko, Baron of Tin Street, a 3 mana 3-3 three, three haste, and then we can also tap it, sack an artifact to put a plus 1 counter on each goblin we control, and whenever we sacrifice an artifact or an artifact is put into our graveyard from the battlefield, we can pay a red mana to make a 1-1 one, one goblin token. So if we have enough artifacts to sacrifice, Krenko can quickly build an army of goblins, and then in green, there's the Axe Bane Ferox, a 4 mana 4 4 with Death Touch and Haste, and Ward making the opponent collect Evidence 4, which is not going to be easy early on. Then there's the Sharp Eyed Rookie, 2 mana 2 2 with Vigilance, and whenever a bigger creature enters, we not only put a plus on plus one counter on it, but we also get to investigate. And then finally, Hide in Plain Sight is a 4 mana sorcery, where we get to take a look at the top 5 cards of our library and then cloak 2 of them. So we end up with a pair of 2 2s with Ward 2 but ideally we've selected some very nice creatures that we can later turn face up by paying their mana cost. Now there's a ton of awesome multicolor rares to choose from here, but I've narrowed it down to just three. One of those is Rakdos, Patron of Chaos, a 6 mana 6-6 six, six flying trample, and at the beginning of our end step the opponent either sacrifices two non-land non-token permanents, if they don't we get to draw two cards. Then Agoras Koss Spirit of Justice is a 4 mana 2-4 with a double strike and vigilance, and when it enters the battlefield or attacks, we get to either suspect a creature, or if it's already suspected, we get to exile that creature instead. So this will just keep exiling the opponent's biggest creatures over and over, and basically make it impossible to block, as they'll succumb to the double strike attacks. And then finally there's Alquist Proft, Master Sleuth, a 3 mana 3-3 three, three with Vigilance when it enters we get to investigate, and then now instead of sacrificing a clue for 2 mana to draw a card, we can pay X, a white and double blue, tap, sacrifice a clue to draw X cards and gain X life. So we can Sphinx's Revelation for every clue we have basically, so we're gonna bury the opponent in card advantage while still gaining enough life so we can afford to spend a turn drawing a few cards. Now, in a format full of creatures with disguise, you might be asking yourself what creatures the opponent could be turning face up at any given time, given the mana they have available, and this is an overview of all those disguise creatures, sorted by color and then also sorted by their increasing disguise costs, so that should help out. And as we notice here in black, a lot of these creatures have a drawback if you cast them normally, but if you disguise them first, it's a way to sidestep those drawbacks instead. Now if you study all these disguise creatures, you'll notice that the rule of 5 is still at play. This used to apply to morph creatures and it still applies to disguise creatures, meaning that as long as the opponent does not have 5 mana available, you don't need to worry about their disguise creature ambushing your disguise creature. So at the very least they're gonna end up trading, sometimes they'll end up bouncing off if their creature has like 1 power and 4 toughness for instance, but you don't need to worry about their creature turning into a 3-3 three, three and eating your 2-2, two, two. only as soon as the opponent has 5 or more mana available, they can actually start ambushing your 2-2, two, two. so that's a very important rule to keep in mind, so in the early game you don't need to worry about any ambushes. And then at the end I'll include an overview of all the disguise cards on one page, and I'll also make a printer-friendly black and white version. Now that we're familiar with all the disguise creatures in the set, we may as well look at all the instants and flash cards in each color, so we can be taken off guard if the opponent passes with a bunch of mana untapped. In white there's a couple pump spells, Auspicious Arrival for 2 mana, giving plus 2 plus 2 and investigating, and then of course On the Job is an important one if the opponent attacks all out and has 4 mana untapped. And then we've got a few removal spells as well, Not on my watch, exiling an attacking creature, and Make your move can destroy artifacts, enchantments, or creatures with power 4 or greater. This is also a card I don't mind main decking at least one copy of. The Doorkeeper Thrall is not too threatening, more of a constructed card, I would not be too worried about it in limited. Then blue is always going to have a lot of instants, and I'll cover counter spells in a separate section. For now, some important ones are Unauthorized Exit as a 2 mana bound spell, Fae Flight can give a creature hexproof and then permanently plus 1 power and flying. 
Then we've got Eliminate the Impossible as kind of a reverse on the job, shrinking creatures power by two until end of turn. And then we also get to Investigate while removing all suspicion. And then Out Cold can be a way to tap some creatures down by putting stun counters on them. So that can also be a huge tempo swing. Then a black has access to some quality removal at instant speed, long goodbye, murder, soul enervation, and even a slice from the shadows. And then there's some decent tricks here as well, like toxin analysis, giving death touch and lifelink for one mana, as well as investigating, and presumed dead for two mana, giving two extra power, and then returning that creature from the graveyard to the battlefield while suspecting it. Then Red has access to some cheap burn spells like Shock and Galvanize. And then a powerful trick like the Chase is on is also important to keep in mind giving 3 extra power and first strike, as well as investigating. A green has pump spells at 1, 2 and 3 mana. Get a leg up is a Might of the Masses, so it increases with the number of creatures you control, as well as giving reach, which is important. Fanatical Strength is a reprint, plus 3, plus 3 and a Trample. And the Airtight Alibi, a 3 mana aura that can be flashed in, untapping the creature, giving it Hexproof, removing all suspicion, and then also giving a permanent plus 2, plus 2 and cannot be suspected. And among multicolor cards, the main ones I would worry about are Assassin's Trophy, Lightning Helix, of course the blue-white counterspell, and then among split cards, the Fuss half of Fuss and Bother can give attacking creatures a plus one plus one counter, so that's also important to keep in mind alongside the other pump spells. And once again all those instants on one page, including a more printer-friendly version. Another type of card that's important to play around are sweepers, and there's quite a few at the rare here. We've got the ill-timed explosion in blue-red, which requires the opponent to discard some cards in order to deal damage to all creatures. Then in white we've already seen no witnesses, and in black there's a deadly cover-up at 5 mana, which will also destroy all creatures. So make sure not to overextend if you suspect the opponent's holding one of these. And as promised, here's an overview of all the counter spells in the set. There's not that many, although it is easier to keep up a counter spell in this format as opposed to other formats because of the presence of all these clue tokens from Investigate. The opponent can always decide to sacrifice a clue and draw card if they don't need to counter anything. And then a disguise creatures also make it easier to pass the turn with a bunch of mana untapped since they can always be turned face up at instant speed. Now that being said, some of these counter spells are conditional in nature, you can potentially pay for reasonable doubt or no more lies if you suspect the opponent is holding them. So if you're in the late game and you would normally maybe hard cast your disguise creature for 5 or 6 mana, then it could be better to put it down for 3 mana instead, and then on the following turn you can turn it face up for its disguise cost, and then you don't need to worry about those more conditional counter spells, so that also sort of weakens them a little bit. And then another fun cycle of cards are these clue equipment. So they do count as clues that can be sacrificed for two mana to draw card. So they do enable various artifact synergies, but they're also reasonable equipment that we can play for one mana. And in most cases equip for two mana, the rope is a little bit more expensive and they've got pretty useful abilities. So if you want a card that can maybe fill out your creature decks, then these can be a nice way to enhance them and make sure that every creature remains impactful. It's time for my favorite section, which I've now dubbed Cool Interactions, and the first one is a pretty simple one. Agency Outfitter kind of works by itself if you include it in the same deck as Magnifying Glass and Thinking Cap. You cast the Outfitter, and you get to search up both artifacts and put them straight onto the battlefield. Magnifying Glass taps for a Colorless, which is enough to equip Thinking Cap onto the Outfitter, and we're left with a 6 mana 5-5 five five Flyer, and then even if it's dealt with, we'll still have those two artifacts to provide value, especially the Magnifying Glass letting us investigate turn after turn can be a nice mana sink. Then a Presumed Dead is already a fine trick, but it works even better alongside creatures with Disguise. If we put our Stalker face down, and then maybe trade up for a larger creature using our trick, then now it will come back as a 6 mana 3-4 flyer that we suspect, so we get a nice little upgrade. Now there's not a ton of cards with the cloak mechanic in this set, since they mostly appear at higher rarity, but should you be lucky enough to open one of them, make sure to combine them with disguise creatures, especially ones that have a low casting cost compared to their disguise cost, because you can now turn a bubble smuggler face up by paying 2 mana as opposed to 6 mana and end up with a 6-5, and same with a radical. 
Magnetic Snuffler loves the clue equipment, as you can play the equipment early, sacrifice it to draw a card, and then later when you cast the Snuffler you can get the equipment back from the graveyard and attach them to your 4-4 construct for free. Part of the reason why I like the Topiary Panther so much is that it's a great collect evidence enabler. Discard it for 2 mana by land cycling, now you've got a 6 mana card in the graveyard to potentially enable your V2 Gazi Inspector. If you've got Audience of Trostani, make sure to be on the lookout for a Killer Among Us, as that will generate three differently named tokens, so now your Audience with Trostani could draw you four or more cards. If you've got Assemble the players in your deck, don't forget that you can also cast the Disguise creatures off the top of your deck, since they will be cast as three mana 2-2s, two which will satisfy the condition. If you're playing an aggro deck but things aren't going too well, then uh, don't forget that you can always play your Red Herring in the second main phase, so that way it doesn't have to attack that turn, you can potentially chum block with it and sacrifice it to draw a card, as opposed to running it into opposing creatures. Living Conundrum is an interesting build around card, a 2-5 with Hexproof, that's an alternate win condition if you can mill out your own library, and then it prevents you from losing the game. Now there's not a ton of actual mill effects in the set, there's a few ways to surveil, but one of the better mill cards is Flatsum and Jetsum, which can use the Flatsum half to mill 3 and then investigate, so that can quickly churn through the deck and hopefully get your 10-10 Living Conundrum going. If that's not your plan, you can always try to suit up the Conundrum with a bunch of auras and equipment, as it's the only reliable hexproof creature in the set. If you're playing an aggressive strategy, the Novice Inspector is perfect for setting up a 3-mana 4-4 Gearbane Orangutan just by sacrificing that clue token. Now while it does mention it in the reminder text, it's still important to point out that uncounterable spells also get around ward, so your long goodbye can take out a disguised creature without having to pay the 2 extra mana. Now let's talk mana fixing. These are some of the more reliable mana fixers out there. I expect most decks in this format to be two colors. Maybe some decks will splash for some bomb in a third color, but uh, there's not a ton of mana fixing available, especially not at lower rarity, unless you're playing green, in which case you've got a few more options, and uh, there's a few ways to search up lanes of other colors. Case of the Shattered Pact, of course, can also fix your colors outside of green, but you're not going to get the most out of it unless you're going for the crazy five color rainbow deck but uh, there's still some nice options in green, especially with the Panther we mentioned. The Nervous Gardener can provide a bit of value. They went this way, also provides a clue token in addition to helping you ramp and fix your colors. And then of course Buried in the Garden is an awesome card all around that can also fix your colors on top of that. And then in terms of land fixing, there's Escape Tunnel, the new take on Evolving Wilds with added utility. And then the Thoroughfare is not great, but at least you can maybe tap a clue token to help pay for it instead of having to tap an actual land. And then of course there's the cycle of 10 rare dual lands that have the two basic land types and let us surveil one, even though they all enter tapped. And finally, I wanted to highlight some one-off returning mechanics. We've seen Wither on Massacre Girl, then a Kellen continues doing its adventure thing in the set as well. We've got a cameo appearance of the poison mechanic on the persuasive interrogators, so that can be a fun alternate win condition for maybe a blue-black control deck. And then there's the Pride as another defender payoff, so maybe there's enough support for it in standard now. And then we've uh, seen the Leyline of the Guild Pact as kind of a one-off Leyline in this set as well. So yeah, that's gonna conclude my draft guide for the murders at Karloff Manor. If you want to see me rate every individual card in the set, that spreadsheet is already available right now to all my supporters on Patreon. And you'll also be able to join the private Discord server, where you can discuss strategy with like-minded individuals. And as some of you may know, my contract to make weekly videos on the official Arena channel has now ended, and I'm also no longer being sponsored by any other company so your support keeps the channel going. If you have any more fun interactions to share, make sure to leave them down below in the comments, I would love to read them. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day!